let's make this idea a little clearer what we mean by A-B testing. So let's imagine we have a pool of customers, right? Uh, and what we're gonna do in order to test um, our different website designs is we're gonna create two different versions. We're gonna create, imagine we're working for an advertising company, we're gonna create one version where the tagline is creativity and style, and the other one is gonna be professional and fast, right? And we wanna know which one is more likely to cause um, our customers to sign up for like a follow-up from one of our salespeople, right? So um, what we do is we take our customers, we split them in half. We basically just send half of them to each version of the website, right? And then we're going to observe how many of them are going to sign up for uh, um, sign up under web version A, which we'll call sign up rate A, and how many of them are going to sign up on web version B, which we'll call sign up rate B. And then the question is. Are these two rates equal or different, right? If one of these is much better than the other, then we should use that one instead, right? And that's really the question we're trying to figure out. And usually we're trying to figure out, so usually A is our, our, is our default one, the one we've been using forever, and B is one that we're trying out as a new study. And so what we want to know is B different enough, is it an improvement enough over A to switch our website around? Okay, so. Now that we have that scenario of how we're actually gonna do the test, right? We're gonna get the consumers, they're gonna come in, the customers are gonna come in, we're gonna randomly assign them to one of two websites, and then based upon their click-through rates on those websites or their email enrollments, we're going to decide which of the websites is better than the other, right? So um, let's take you through a couple of examples, right? So imagine an example where I just have two different variants, right? So I have the um, in the original case, we're talking about the creativity and style example and the professional and fast example. Right? Now let's imagine that our base population conversion rate under the old uh, design was about 30%. Out of a very 100 people who came to the website, 30 of them actually signed up. And that is, so on the old uh, creativity and style example, we had 30 signups per 100 people. Right? Now let's also say that in order to kind of invest in the, the new website, the new website design, the new catchphrase, we need to see at least a, a 6% improvement. That's a 20% improved, absolute, 6% absolute improvement, a 20% relative improvement over the previous frame. Right? So um, if that's the case, then it turns out when we plug these numbers in and assume something about um, the distributions, the, uh, the types of errors we're willing to allow, we need to see about 962 uh, uh, individuals, customers, on each website to tell if one of the websites is doing better than the other, right? So if we have 200 customers per day, that means we can assign 100 customers to each website variation per day if we're using all of the, the visitors to our website in the test, right? Which means it's gonna take us about nine and a half days to get an estimate as to whether or not one is better than the other. But you don't have to do all this math to calculate it out. It turns out I'm actually just using this AB split test duration uh, website, um, a tech calculator on the BWO website, right? Um, let's imagine a different scenario where we have two variants and the estimated conversion rate is 30 and we, we want to observe at least a minimal improvement of 40%. So now that's going from 30% to a 42% conversion rate, right? Then it turns out our sample size goes way down to 250, which we'll talk about in a second which means that if we get 100 to each person, we're gonna have numbers in two and a half days as to how comparable they are, right? Now, uh, 100 to each website variants, I meant to say, not person. But, um, so why is that number so much smaller, right? It's a quarter of the size of the relative minimum, of the, of the number one when the relative minimum improvement was 20%. Well, it turns out, right, but really what we're trying to do is compare two normal distributions, right? We have these two distributions and we're trying to figure out if they're overlapping enough or not, right? If our threshold is that they have to be really far apart from each other, right? Then it becomes very easy to tell statistically whether or not, that, whether or not we have enough evidence to show that's the case. If they're closer, it's actually harder to tell if they're different. We need to observe more samples in order to tell if they're different than each other. So when we bump up this relative minimum improvement, we actually decrease the number of samples we need to see substantially. So let's imagine a third scenario. It's exactly like the second scenario, but now, you know, for whatever reason, we've decided we don't want to include everyone in our in our test, right? We only want to include 50% of the people. Well, if that's the case, then we're only really sending 50 people 
per variation uh, each day, right? Which means that it's going to take us about it's going to take us five days per it's going to take us five days to observe whether or not we have enough uh, data to make a decision, right? Um, because it takes us um, uh, it takes us roughly because uh, uh, because we need two hundred fifty samples per person. Each uh, variation is only getting 50 persons a day, 50 people per day, let's take one second, so five days. Okay, another scenario. Now we've got three variants. We've got A, a B, and a C, right? And we're again doing everything else the same. Well, now it turns out, right, if we have three variants and we're only observing 100, um, and we're only able to use 100 people a day because we're only able to use half the population, right? Then we can only send 30 people to each website per day, right? Which means that it's gonna take us about seven and a half days or so in order to get enough people going to each website in order for us to make a decision as to whether or not there's this significant or not. So let's dive in a little bit more into exactly why those numbers come out of the equations, right? So two variables that we haven't talked about yet um, that affect this decision is what do you consider to be statistically significant? And really, you can break this down into two ideas, significance and power, right? And significance is measured usually by something known as alpha, uh, where we usually describe 0.05 as the value that's standard, which uh, you might sometimes hear referred to as a 95% confidence interval, right? Um, and, 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 or 95%, um, yeah, 95% statistically significant, right? Um, and the, the, the what alpha really is, is the probability that you have a type one error, right? And a type one error means that you've said that there's a difference when it actually doesn't exist. So for instance, let's imagine that the two different variations are gonna create exactly the same conversion rate, right? But one of them gets that 36% and one of them doesn't, right? And it might just be that it got that 36% because of random change. And so alpha is helping you control for that. It's letting you specify how much of that random chance you're willing to, to suffer. And so we're saying one out of 20 times, we might be wrong about this, right? And this is sometimes referred to as a significant slip. On the other hand, there's beta, right? And beta is usually set at 0.2. And beta is the probability of a type two error. A type two error means that you will say a difference does not exist when it actually does. Now, usually we set beta much higher than alpha, um, there's a relationship between the two, but we usually set beta much higher because of the fact that what we're interested in is more showing that there is a difference and we want to be on the cautionary side of making that assumption. Okay? Um, and one minus beta is referred to as power. So um, you might sometimes hear that there's an 80, there's a 0.8 power for this particular test, right? As opposed to a 0.2 probability of a type two error. Now, how do we take all the, how do we actually use all this? Well, there's a formula um, that basically says that you take that statistical power and significance and you square that value to get you a, give you a multiplier for how many examples you're going to need. And now you take the variance of the baseline population and the variance of the uh, population you're trying to achieve, and you divide that by the num by the by the difference you want to see. And this essentially you're calculating essentially how much outside of that original mean you're willing, you want to see this difference. So um, a lot of times when we set beta equal to 0.2 and alpha equal to 0.5, then this T of alpha over two is 1.96, goes over here, and T of beta is 0.84. And so we can just put in a constant here, and it's around eight, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it, right? So uh, P1 is the previous conversion rate, uh, and P2, as I mentioned, is the new conversion rate, and D is going to be the difference between them. So let's actually work this out in an example. So let's take that first scenario, right? So in this case, as I said, 1.96 plus 0.84 squared, that's 2.8 squared, that's roughly 8, right? And then the variance of the first proportion rate is going to be 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3, right? Uh, which winds up as 0.21. And the second one is going to be 0.36 times 1 point minus 0 0.36, 0 0.4, roughly 0.234. And then we take the, um, the difference that we want to observe and we square it, which in this case is 0.06 and 0.036. So we get 7.84 times 0.4404 divided by 0.036 
because it's 3.45 divided by 0 0.036, which is 962, right? So that's how we get that number right there, and you can do that math for the other calculations, and you'll get the numbers out exactly, right? So we also know the traffic per variant day is 100, right? Um, and this is the number of people we need per variant. That's what the calculation is, the sample size per variant in the way we're doing it. And so it'll take us nine and a half days for the experiment to have enough samples, right? Now, um, you can actually do this really quickly in R if you want. Um, and so you can just do this command called uh, power.prop.test, right? Uh, and you just specify what your, probably your first proportion is, the, the sorry, the proportion for the first one, the conversion rate you, you see in the first example, the conversion rate you're seeing in the second example, what significance level you want and what power you want, and it automatically calculates out for you the, um, the results. Right? So, that gives you what you need in order to calculate out the length of your sample size. So we've now talked about the most popular way to do testing and optimization. In the next set, we're going to talk about what kinds of things do you want to test when 